Hey there, I'm Ryan, Senior Customer Success Engineer here at Woopra, and today we're going to go through our trends reports and show you how to build them, uh, what they're used for, and how you can get the most uh, out of using them. So just starting off, if you go to the Analyze tab, New Report, you can create a new trends report. What these are mainly used for is measuring anything over time. So this could be page views over time, payments over time, or even looking at how certain campaigns are trending over time if you're using UTM tags for any incoming links. So just going through the various aspects of the report here, um, we have our time frame and perform by actions interval. So we'll go through each one of these. For the time frame here, this is like it says, it's just looking at any data, any users that are active during this time period that you select here. When you click on some of these, we have different options here. So we have absolute dates if you want to select a specific date, or we have relative dates, which uh, can be useful for you know selecting the last 30 days or the last uh, you know year ago, um, and annotation dates. So if you have any uh, dates that uh, are significant for like a product launch or maybe you're doing a new campaign You can also tag annotations dates and we can use those for selecting time frame as well uh, More about that in a bit. So our perform by section here would uh, Select the segment or group of users you want to narrow in on for the report and There's a lot of segmentation filters that we can use here so we can get very granular on who we want to look at for filtering on this report. So for example, maybe I want to look at uh, users that clicked an email in the last 30 days, we could do that. But we can also get even more specific by adding the plus here so we can do um, parallel actions basically that we can filter on. So maybe we wanted to look at someone who also toggled a, a sidebar. I'm just kind of picking you know, random things here, but you can get a sense of how these could get pretty specific on the group that you want to analyze. Um, there's also, this is more of kind of a uh, advanced feature of this um, performed by segmentation filters. We can select and or or, and we can also do nested segmentation as well. So, um, like I said, you can get very specific with these segmentation filters, uh, you know, change the ands and the ors. And if you're building out a really large segment, we can also save these. So you don't have to keep rebuilding them on in each report. So if you click the little save here, it'll become like a drop down uh, option here that you can use in various reports. So like I said, you don't have to keep building these out over and over again. Great, so next we'll move on to the actions here. This is the event that we want to analyze for the report. And you know these will vary depending on what you, events you're specifically tracking on your project. Uh, for us, you know, we have a, a bunch of different events. Out of the box tracking, we'll always have page view events. So this is when, you know, a user lands on a certain page on your site. And so we can look at uh, page view events here. Let's just run this so we can see what kind of data we're getting here. So once you run this report, you'll see we have like a compare by and measure by section here. Our compare by section will essentially show you all the properties that are associated with the page view action or whatever action you've selected. So here we have you know these properties that are associated with it, like URL, URI, um, you know the page title, domain, things like that. In Woopra, just so you're aware, uh, how we use your uh, URL and URI. URL is going to be anything after the domain name, so anything after the .com will be URL, and URI would be anything uh, would be the complete address in Mupra. So that's how we use those two different ones. Uh, so, like I said, in the compare by, you can group by these different things. So, if I wanted to, uh, you know, group by page title that people are going to. So right now, if we look at the results here, uh, by default, it's just going to show the dates, how many people. Um, did a page view event and out of uh, that amount of people for that specific date uh, those people did 
like how many page views. So we see like around 1300 of the 711 people uh, did page views. And out of those same people, they had about uh, a thousand different sessions. Um, so that's what the difference with people, actions, and visits will be. Um, a session is basically anytime a user uh, doesn't go idle. So if they you know stay on the page for a while, maybe they go off and you know make a sandwich. They come back, and uh, that would uh, possibly start a new session. So that would count as a new visit. Um, so once we add in a compare by here, like the title, if we run this now, uh, it changes the columns and how we group the data. So now instead of looking at the dates, we're grouped by the individual titles of the pages. So we can see we have a lot of people that went to you know our home page. Um, they're looking at some of our blog posts. We can see how many people and how many times they're looking at these pages. Um, and so that would be the compare by and measure by. Measure by is going to be any of those aggregations. So that's the other columns here, like the people, actions, and visits. Uh, we'll have a couple other options here. So if you click to add um, additional columns for the measure by, uh, basically when you're doing any kind of aggregation, it will be under this section. So we can look at counts, um, sum as well. So sum of action duration. You know, if we want to see how long they're doing an action or looking at a page, uh, we can use those different aggregations as well. And we can also do formulas. So if you're used to any kind of row-based operations like in Excel, um, that would be our formulas here. Um, these would change depending on what action you're selecting and what data is being sent to Woopra. For example, if we're sending a payment event, you might see some of revenue here if there's an amount associated with that uh, payment event. So uh, again, these will change depending on the action. Um, there are a couple built-in uh, fields as well in Woopra. So if we look at, uh, if we go back into the constraints here, so if we want to look at, you know, a specific page, we could do that as well. So if we add a constraint, um, you know, we can define maybe uh, we want to look at pages that contain pricing. Uh, we could do that. Uh, well, and for our built-in built in fields, we also have some different system properties here as well. Um, so we can look at maybe durations that were a certain length. If you're using UTM tags for any incoming links, that's going to all be under our campaign properties. So this would be like camp, you know, UTM underscore source, UTM underscore medium, and so on. Uh, we also have these visit properties that we track along with page view events. So if you want to look at users from specific cities or countries, uh, different IPs, we could do that as well. Uh, we can also compare by those different fields uh, in addition to you know just selecting page view properties themselves. So for example, if you want to see page views, but we want to break this down by different uh, you know uh, device types, we could do that. So if we add a device type, we can run this. So instead of grouping by title, now we'll see you know how many people are from desktop, mobile, and tablet. We could do that. Um, so all these different built-in fields can be very useful. If we're looking at uh, refer types, this would actually uh, show you where traffic is coming from. Um, one note on refer types, uh, these are using what we can pull from the user's browser when they visit a site. So once they visit your site, uh, if we're able to pull that refer URL where they came from, that's not always possible due to a lot of factors like the site blocking that from being transmitted. Uh, there's different ad blockers that might also block this or certain browsers that block this. But if we're able to get that refer URL from their browser when they visit your site, there's some logic on the back end that will essentially bucket them into these different categories. So we have you know, organic search, direct uh, backlinks from basically other sites to your site, internal links. PPC is anything with a link that would has a refer with a GCL ID from like a Google click link. Uh, you know, social, anything from 
um, you know, social media platforms, LinkedIn, things like that, and uh, also email events. So there is a little bit of logic and guesswork that goes into bucketing these. So it's always better to use, uh, you know, UTM tags when trying to look at uh, external links to the site. But this will give a great sense of where those users are coming from. Um, one other aspect to this is if we're looking at refer types, we could also uh, hone this down onto specific ones too. So if you want to see uh, refer types that are from search engines, for example. So instead of uh, um, breaking this down by refer types, we did that in the action constraints. If we look at the refer URLs instead, uh, you can see what this does and we can basically see we're looking at only search engines but we're seeing which search engines that those visits are coming from so we can see you know easily that Google's you know the top one here uh, we can also compare different ones on the graph itself so we if we want to compare you know the top three against each other to see how those are trending over time uh, we could do that so we can kind of see here this might not have been a great example because it looks like Bing and DuckDuckGo aren't nearly as good as Google but you can get a sense of uh, that those uh, uh, numbers over time here we can also change how this is displayed so if we want to you know change the visual aspect of it we can uh, you know stacked or unstacked so that's all the visual aspects here and then we also have comparison data so let me just uh, clear this out here and we'll set this back to um, our line chart here. So let's run that again. So the comparison data is this little drop down here. So essentially what you can do is compare uh, the current data to a previous time period. So for looking, for example, let's do uh, you know previous, uh, oops, let's do previous 30 days, for example. So if I run this report here, this previous uh, time period will be represented as the dotted line on the report. And if we hover over any part of the report, we can see those numbers there. So we can see that uh, it's comparing uh, 4122 to 3222, which would be 30 days ago. And we can see that there's a decrease of uh, total searches there. Um, we're down like 20% for this specific day. Other days were you know, up specific percentages. Here we're up 9.2%. Uh, so this can be very useful to uh, look at any kind of comparative analysis. So once you're completed with your report, there's a couple things here. You can save the report. You'll want to you know, name this, uh, whatever you're going to name it. Let's do uh, page views for now. We can also add a description. I usually uh, like to add a description just for other people who may be looking at the report. They might not know what, what it is. So that could be helpful as well. So once we do that, we actually have these other options on the drop down here. So if you click the three dots, the three ellipses, there's, you'll see a bunch of different options here. I'll just briefly go through the, the main ones. There are a couple here that will change depending on what integrations you have and which package you have as well, because there is a couple different uh, functions you could do here. Uh, but kind of going down the list here, you know, we'll see the name who created the report. If you click this, this is kind of a pro tip uh, when you see the last updated here, that'll actually bring you to an audit log. So uh, you can see if there, there were any changes made to re the report and when they were made. And you can also revert changes. So, you know, if, if someone comes in, you know, changes a bunch of things in your report, you go back and you're like, hey, what, what, what happened here? So you can see, you know, who changed it and also um, undo those changes. So useful feature that's not always super um, uh, visible, but it's there. We can also export this report as a CSV or PDF. Um, these are a couple different options here to sync the report. Again, depending on which integration you have, uh, you'll see a different options here. Uh, for snapshots, this is great if you want to send this report to someone that may not be a user in Wupra. So you can create a snapshot. It'll create a link to the report for that person to then you know view uh, without having to sign up for a Wooper account. We can create triggers based on these actions. 
Uh, one important thing is to always share this report. If you do want to share it to a different team member that may be uh, you know, in your Whooper instance. So just make sure that's always checked. If it's not checked, only the person that created the report is going to be able to see it. We can tag pin this report to dashboards, uh, a couple different options here. And then we can also create uh, make this report read only. So if you didn't want anyone to you know, mess with the report after you created it, uh, just check this button and, and no one else can edit it but yourself unless this is unchecked. And uh, you know, we can also delete the report. So that pretty much sums it up for our trends reports. If you have any questions, please reach out to support at whooper.com. Uh, happy to answer any questions that come in. And uh, thanks for your time and happy charting.